Welcome back to this latest episode of Japan's Top Business Interviews. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President Dale Kanehi Tokyo Training. And my special guest today is Kentaro Kiso, who is the President of Barclay Securities here in Japan. Kiso-san, thank you very much. Welcome. Thanks very much for inviting me, yeah, Greg. Yeah, and thank uh, you for hosting us in your beautiful boardroom here. This is fantastic. Uh, no, I'm sorry to not be able to share our beautiful site outside. You today. got a beautiful view from this mm. office. It's fantastic. So uh, you've had a very interesting background. Maybe you could share some elements of that with us. And how did you get to become the president of Barclay Securities here in Japan? I never imagined to describe my own career as interesting enough, but uh, I, I have a, a desire to join uh, like a foreign company when I finished my school uh, education in Tokyo. So uh, I took a job at uh, JP Morgan in Tokyo in 1989. That's 34 years ago. So did you do did you do finance or economics at yes. university? And that was a sort of natural. Where did you go to university? I went to Tokyo, Tokyo in, uh, University, right? in economics, and uh, I specialized in international finance. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was very natural mm. course of decision for me to look for uh, something in banking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but uh, my, as I said, original desire was to work abroad mm -hmm. rather than in Japan. So mm -hmm. uh, probably the shortcut was to get a job in foreign banks. So why, why did you want to work overseas? What was so attractive about that? Um, if you are involved in something, you need to be in the center of that all happening. And mm -hmm. uh, as we all learn, capitalism started in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So American bank sounds like a natural destination for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, J.P. Morgan, how many years were you there? I was there for close to 16 years, long enough to become a part of furniture. Yeah, and I guess over those 16 years, you started leading teams at mm. some point. I guess you're, mm. you're a player, you're doing things, mm -hmm. and you've got a boss, and eventually you become the boss. Mm. So what did you find challenging about moving into the leadership area when you first started doing it? So I've never worked for a Japanese company. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing to start with. So uh, uh, American company like JP Morgan, and then I moved into Barclays in London in 2004. Mm -hmm. There is a, was a clear difference, uh, U.S. banks versus British bank mm -hmm. being a bit more aggressive versus more conservative mm -hmm. in approach. Um, but my team in Tokyo are mainly Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, but they all are young people aspired to get a career in mm -hmm. foreign company. So uh, mm -hmm. they were more outspoken. So it's not like uh, you tell them what to do top down and mm -hmm. they get it done, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of more team debating what's good and what's not good and mm. what's in for today or next week. And uh, so for me, leadership is, was all about communicating and getting uh, understanding of your staff. Um, mm. In Japanese, there's a word called haraochisuru. Haraochisuru mm -hmm. is like uh, you actually get really convincing mm -hmm. that uh, you just don't order people what to do, but mm -hmm. uh, you need to make them really convinced for them to make sense, mm. to make something get started uh, in a motivated way. So um, that's how I learned uh, from early days of 90s that uh, how to make my people or my team uh, moving in the same direction. In Japanese companies' cases, most of the training they get is on the job training. Right. So they are in a section, they have a boss, they're observing their bosses, or mm -hmm. they might be rotated around some sections, mm -hmm. so they're observing different leadership styles. But for most Western companies, mm. it's a bit more formal. They actually have leadership training. Mm. They send people away for courses or you know whatever. Right. How about in your case at uh, J.P. Morgan? Did they educate you in leadership or was it on the job training? I think it was more on the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, because my career started as a trader, mm -hmm. as a trader, you respect mm -hmm. people who makes money. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot about walk the walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are a profitable trader, even if you are not necessarily a communicative person, you get a lot of admiration. Mm. And that's how it goes. Mm. It's very different from being a banker or mm -hmm. being a salesperson. Mm -hmm. Salesperson, you have to be talking well, mm -hmm. convincing. Mm -hmm. But trader, you can be quiet and still make money. And you can be awful and still Ex make money. Exactly. Right? As, as a you person, yeah. you can be not so nice person. Yeah. But yeah. still, you can lead the team yeah. because you have to show the example. Mm. You have to show your way of 
you know, succeeding it,、mm. and、uh, people will naturally follow you. But、uh, that was an early career where、mm. I started. So I had a lot of、uh, my predecessors who actually I followed、uh, as a great example.、Mm. But、uh, I won't say they were all necessarily,、uh, you know, people managers,、oh. let's say. But、uh, so that was a good learning process for me in early 90s. And at some point, I guess you transition、mm. out of bank because a trader is a very specific、mm. job, very high pressure,、mm. a lot of concentration. But at some point, I guess you moved out of、mm. being a trader to being probably a leader、mm. of a team. Is that what happened for you? Yes.、Um, if I recall, I was not a super trader.、Mm -hmm. I was a good trader,、mm -hmm. but、uh, I was not like a one in a million、mm -hmm. type. So.、Uh, After ten year, I sort of、uh, chose my own way of you know doing things and、uh, sort of shifted my tack in Korea.、Mm -hmm. um, worked out more as a banker,、mm -hmm. uh, more as an investment banker,、mm -hmm. uh, working in the capital markets,、uh, debt syndicate,、mm -hmm. advisory type of role.、Mm -hmm. So instead of、uh, being in、uh, jeans and t-shirts, more tie and suits. <laughs> It was not that stark difference, but、mm -hmm. uh, the way how you carry out your day's work was、mm -hmm. quite different.、Mm -hmm. and, and also、uh, the the way of of communicating with people,、mm -hmm. leading people, as you say, as a trader,、mm -hmm. you have to produce money.、Mm -hmm. You have to get results.、Mm -hmm. But when you transition out of that specific、mm -hmm. role, now you're leading people. So your communication skills, people skills.、Mm -hmm. Strategic skills, you know, all these directional skills need to come into play. So,、right. at that point, does J.P. Morgan say, "Okay, Kisasan, you've moved out of、mm. trading, you're into more of a leadership position. Here's some training we're going to give you on that."、Right. Or again, were you working it out yourself through trial and error? Trial and error, I would say.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, being a trader,、uh, even if you talk well、mm -hmm. and you show a vision and direction, if it's turned not correct.、Mm -hmm. People won't pay much attention, but、mm -hmm. uh, as a banker, you need、mm -hmm. to show direction and you need to lead the team by telling them that、uh, which strategy we are taking,、mm -hmm. and、uh, it sort of requires a certain time for that strategy to pan out,、uh, whether it was right or not.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, there's a lot of a、uh, uh, skill for execution.、Mm -hmm. Talking vision is the right thing,、mm -hmm. and the people. We、get get convinced,、mm -hmm. but、uh, once they are convinced, you really need to execute it smartly.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, being a trader, that results come、yeah. out every day. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. it was very different set of、uh, yeah. dynamism. Yeah, and for yourself, you know, you're a Todai graduate,、mm -hmm. the most prestigious university in Japan. So you're obviously still. <laughs> well, I believe so. I don't know. I think Todai is still pretty good. Okay. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to complain about graduating from、mm -hmm. Todai anytime soon, but. You know,、um, I presume that you probably also、mm. self-educated yourself to some、mm. extent on leadership. Like the、uh, company may not be providing you with formal leadership training,、mm. but did you do things on your own to study leadership or to improve yourself as a leader? I I think as as you said, rightly,、uh, try and error all、mm -hmm. the time. And、uh, if you cannot convince anybody, even your team, even the most junior grad.、Mm -hmm. You won't be able to move your team forward.、Yeah. So,、uh, when you talk about intelligence around the leadership, I more resort to、uh, emotional side of、uh, intelligence、mm -hmm. rather than just a top-down. And is that because that's how you grew up, or something inside you, or something you learnt or studied, or something just happened naturally to you? Because, you know, the trader is rather、mm. dry、mm. activity, right?、Mm. Money speaks. But the leader is what we Japanese would say wet.、Mm. You know, it's more that EQ side of things rather than the sort of execution result side of things. So, where did that come from? I think you just reminded me that、uh, maybe it's rooted down to my early childhood,、mm -hmm. where I spent a few years in the U.S.、Oh, okay, and、uh, it was not necessarily easy to、mm. communicate or、uh, get understanding. This is what high school time.、Uh, earlier, a lot oh, earlier, oh, like、okay. elementary school time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and、uh, it's it's I, I probably picked up a lot of a skill set around how to understand people or、uh, how to put yourself in other people's shoes、mm. or how to make them understand what I'm trying to say.、Mm. So、uh, you can't do things alone, right?、Mm. You need a team to carry、mm. out a big project.、Mm. So 
to do so, you re again, you really need to have an empathy and uh, convincing logic to get them involved. How so, many years uh, of elementary school did you complete in the States? Uh, two, three years. Right. Okay. Short, yeah. but very Still, intensive one. I bet it was, yes. Very Especially intensive one. going straight into English from Japanese yeah. must be and I was hard. living in a suburb of Detroit. Mm. So it, not necessarily the area that uh, in those years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, too friendly to uh, somebody from Japan, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I guess, the trade frictions in those days. It, yeah. Exactly. Really. And so, okay, you're now uh, mm. understanding the probably the more human skill side mm -hmm. type of things, communication types of things. And so uh, how big did the team get that you were leading inside JP Morgan? Uh, in Tokyo, uh, I think my team was about eight to 10 people, 10 people, I would say. Right. Mostly traders right. and a bit of sales, but uh, then moved into London, similar type of you so know, that was team. with uh, J.P. Morgan? Yes, or? with J.P. So just coming back to that, because, mm. you know, I've had uh, people on this podcast mm. who are leading, uh, I would say, very independent type of people. Right. And uh, the word herding cats yeah. springs to my mind when I hear you're leading traders mm. who are there because they get results. Mm. Uh, probably, I'm guessing, mm. pretty hard people to lead because they think, well, hang on a minute. I'm getting the numbers here. Mm. Uh, you can't tell me what to do, or I yeah. don't need you. Yeah. Uh, I'm responsible for myself. So mm. as a leader, leading mm. traders must be, I'm guessing, one of the hardest schools of leadership. I agree. Uh, I had a, several people who makes more money than me, mm -hmm. naturally. Mm -hmm. They had a skill set. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, just by comparing number, mm -hmm. I can't just control them mm -hmm. in an entirety. But uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, they had their drawback, and uh, that's where I can feel mm -hmm. and make them feel that, oh, he's my boss because mm -hmm. he's covering my mm -hmm. you know, back. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not necessarily entirely money. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of element of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my job or my challenging part of job was to make sure that I can fill those void. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they are convinced that I'm filling the void and, you know, watching their back, uh, they're happy working for me. Because mm -hmm. there's one thing a lot of people complain about. Mm -hmm. They don't have a very high performing team mm -hmm. to lead. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult. But you've actually got probably the opposite problem there. Mm. When you've got very high performing people, mm. that's also very challenging to lead yeah. high performing people. So what did you learn from that experience? I think if you have 10 people, you can't have everybody like A players. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a, a bit of a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. They have a strong ego. Mm -hmm. and, but the, So let's say you have a three A players. Mm -hmm. You have A minus mm -hmm. and B. Mm -hmm. And ideally, you don't need C. Mm -hmm. But uh, you need a right mixture of... Mm -hmm. uh, leading function, supporting function, mm -hmm. and uh, people who are opinionated, assertive, mm -hmm. aggressive, or mm -hmm. people who get cautious in risk management type. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of the team, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can control all of them, mm -hmm. fill the void, as I said, mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that uh, I'm a sort of brother slash father figure, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. right? So, uh, and pay respect to what they're good at. If mm -hmm. somebody is good at being an A in making money, we all make whole team to respect that aspect, mm. but some other person maybe a in coordinating meeting. Mm. So um, and again, I will make sure that my team staffs will pay due respect to those aspect of uh, features. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so uh, you are sent to London mm. by J P Morgan, and this is, I guess, the you join J P Morgan mm. because you want to work in a national environment. Yep. And so finally, after what, how many finally. years? How many in 98, years in 1998. So finally, so it took after you 10 about, years. Yeah, to almost get there. 10 years, yes. Very patient to get there, but you got there. And so. Uh, I, I had a training in New York and also in Singapore okay. about a year each. Oh, okay. And, uh, but that was sort of short stint. Yes. So it was not a permanent move. No. So, uh, yeah. So you get to London, and are the team in London Japanese or no. Europeans or UK based or what's the All story? British. All British, okay. Yeah. So now you've come out of. Uh, a Japanese environment, mm. you've spent time in the States in elementary school, you've been working in mm. American bank in Japan, now you're working for American bank in mm. London, and you've got a team to run. Mm. So what was the position you held when you went to London? I was looking after trading, uh, Again. Uh, called the uh, Japan desk, and mm -hmm. uh, anything to do with yen, Japan, okay. uh, right. we were disseminating information around mm -hmm. Japan, and uh, it was a year that uh, 
whole world was interested in Japan. Yeah. So we were busy. Mm. Yeah. Uh, getting call and, uh, you know, getting trade done. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was fun. Mm. And so what was the obvious thing you've got going from leading Japanese mm. to leading mm. non-Japanese? What were some of the challenges you immediately struck having to lead a whole UK-based team? Um, there is no hierarchy in mm -hmm. a sense that uh, you have to be in office until your boss leave, mm -hmm. right? So uh, my traders or my juniors were off to pub at 5 p.m. Yeah. I was the one staying <laughs> until like 8, 9, and, uh, and they didn't care much about those uh, hours I spent in office. You mm -hmm. know, they, they always like say, oh, Kiso-san, you're here in London as an expat. You must be your house must be furnished, and uh, you're getting better pay than me. So uh, it's it's very natural for you to work longer. Oh, okay. That's how they think. Yeah. So uh, very rational. Uh, I know, I know, and I think it was right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a you know leadership position, so I there's more responsibility and accountability with me, mm. and uh, yeah, so um, it, it's very different from how you you know deal with the Japanese. Mm. Uh, stuff. What other things did you notice were different in terms of trying to? I mean, traders are mm. traders. I said mm. before, mm. I use the metaphor of herding cats, you mm. know, because they're very independent. And as you say, in England, probably a little bit more conservative than America, maybe, but still probably different to Japanese. Mm -hmm. So, what was uh, some other challenges of leading them? I think London being such a cosmopolitan city, mm -hmm. they have a natural um, a, a kind of a foundation to respect each other's, you know, trade. Mm. Let's say so. Uh, if you are from Bulgaria, Russia, India, Japan, they kind of try to understand that uh, what their value and backgrounds are, and uh, pay due respect. Mm. And uh, that's I really, really liked about London. Mm. And uh, like my team, uh, afterwards, after being a trader, uh, I, I looked into uh, capital markets and the syndicate side of the team, and uh, my team grew and. Uh, yeah, we, we had more and more people with a different background. Mm. And again, we all paid due respect to uh, mm. what they know, what they learned, and how they are opinionated, right? Mm. So um, I, I felt that the running these team with a very diverse way of thinking uh, was quite a fun. Mm. Yeah, mm. And that's why I want, wanted to stay there. But, yeah, uh, yeah. And then you, you switched to Barclays. You stayed in, in 2004. London. Yeah. Yeah. Moved to Barclays. Yeah. So, uh, what were you doing at Barclays? I was looking after a sort of a bond syndicate mm -hmm. or a so called structured note business. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a quite famous here. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I also looked after uh, what they call SSA business. Uh, mm -hmm. SSA stands for Supranational Sovereign and Agency. Mm -hmm so-called public sector business. Mm -hmm. You deal with government, you deal with mm -hmm. government agency mm -hmm. in their financing, in their advisory mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I had a question from my clients that uh, why the hell Japanese bankers working in London <laughs> advising us in Finland? <laughs> good question. Yeah. Uh, good question. How did you answer that? <laughs> I will have a lot more global perspective yeah, about what, what happened in Japan, yeah. China, yeah. Hong Kong, Malaysia, yeah. Yeah. Korea. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they wanted to have a, quite a balanced view around mm. what needs to be done. So your, your role is different in Barclays mm. and your team is, again, uh, English, I guess, mainly English? Um, 12 to 13 back countries. Oh, Mi really? Very really? mixed. Well, yeah. how, how many people in the team? Uh, eventually, I had about 22, 24. Right. So almost everyone's from a different country. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And so in that sense, you're, uh, you're no longer leading traders, you're leading bankers now. Mm. And again, what were some of the adjustments you had to make to lead that team, being a different English bank for a start, mm -hmm. very multinational, uh, very diverse team, mm -hmm. and a different type of functionality, not the trader functionality. So it requires a different approach, I guess. So what were some of the adjustments you made? Sometimes the difficult part of being a banker is that clients won't take you seriously as a risk taker. Uh -oh. Because clients are the, take, the one taking risk. Mm -hmm. Traders are taking risk. Mm -hmm. But bankers are advising people, mm -hmm. making fee mm -hmm. out of mm -hmm. getting transaction done. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily ultimate 
mm-hmm. risk takers. Mm-hmm. So if I were a client and some banker advising me, like a consultant, to okay. do this and that, mm-hmm. I would say, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one who having a sleepless nights, right? It's my so, money. <laughs> exactly, it's my money, my company, yeah. and uh, you're just advising me and earning fee from me. Mm. So, uh, being a banker with a risk taking background, it gave me a lot of weight okay. on what I say. Okay. That's how I un- understood. Mm. So, clients' agony and pain and uh, all the issues that they are going through, I could look into it mm-hmm. as a my own issue mm. and uh, I told my team that, that you have to show that sympathy and empathy mm. to put yourself in client's shoes so that uh, they will really look at you as a trusted banker mm. the, who I, I, I can go to mm. because otherwise there is a 10 20 other investment bankers mm. out there mm. they all giving them mm. similar advices mm. right mm. so uh, if you want to be one out of those 10, 20, mm. you really need to think mm. hard mm. to be in their position. Mm. And uh, so to, to me, managing bankers and pe- people in that side was not necessarily uh, difficult. Mm-hmm. That's what I found mm-hmm. because uh, being a trader for over 10 years, you make decision every day, every mm. hour. Mm. and uh, you will find out relatively soon whether it was right or wrong. Mm. So, um, and occasionally you can't find the right reason for why you made a mistake mm. being a trader. Or the right reason why you made a good call. Exactly. Yeah. So some legendary <laughs> traders made a fortune for the reason with a way that they even can't even explain, mm. right? Mm. You can always, in hindsight, put the reason that mm-hmm. this is how I succeed, mm-hmm. how I made money. Mm-hmm. That's, again, in hindsight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but So being a banker, is a, your result will come out re- relatively later, mm-hmm. sometimes a year later, like mm-hmm. for M&A banker's case. Mm-hmm. So whether you are right or wrong won't be judged on a daily basis. Mm. But because more so, you really need to be in sync with mm. your client because clients are thinking about it every day. Yeah. And with that, was it the difference also in that team because you said because they're a, a, an English bank, mm. Barclays maybe a bit more conservative than the American style banking, did that cause you to adjust your leadership style to fit in with that culture or no? Uh, not really because uh, I like the way Barclays dealing with client. Mm-hmm. We are quite a long-termer. Mm-hmm. And we care about very much long-term relationship. Mm-hmm. So in a way, if you're selling 10-year product, mm-hmm. you need to look after the client mm-hmm. for 10 years mm-hmm. So you, until that money go, goes back to client. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's not exactly the way how American banks are teaching us, mm-hmm. right? They can, you know, in a heyday, they can just earn money up front and just clean your hand. Mm-hmm. But the Barclays being out there over 330 years, Mm -hmm. that tells. It's Mm -hmm. a long history Mm -hmm. of a client relationship. You can't Mm -hmm. just wash your hand in a one trade. Mm -hmm. You need to deal with them long, long time. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's how I like about our firm, Mm -hmm. that uh, every time we initiate relationship, it's just the beginning of very long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. So I tell my people that uh, you don't need to make money this year, or Mm -hmm. not even next year. Mm -hmm. Let's see when clients start to get worried that, uh, hey, are you guys making money from us? Because it mm. uh, looks like it's all free service. Mm. So I would say, don't worry. You know, we are just building a long-term relationship and uh, eventually we will make up money. We'll catch it up. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. so you came, uh, you came with Barclays back mm. to Japan. Mm. And did you come into the role of president immediately or did um, you go I, to the secondary role before that? Um, I spent about two and a half years uh, looking after Asia Pacific, mm-hmm. uh, including Japan, in a debt business. From London? From actually Tokyo. Oh, Tokyo. Okay, yeah. you came back to Tokyo to Tokyo. take care of APAC, uh, basically. People called me suitcase banker. So uh, <laughs> I didn't stay in Tokyo. I was in Beijing, Singapore, oh. Hong Kong, Jakarta, India. So uh, yeah, every hotel receptionist just tell me that, uh, oh, welcome back, Mr. Kiso. 
It must be very good for the family. Uh, seeing you. <laughs> my family stayed in London oh, for two okay. and a half years, really? and okay. um, and that's why I managed to do this, you know, yeah. carry out this lifestyle. This so I had an apartment here. Yeah, but uh, I only came back to do a laundry. <laughs> wow, it's tough. If you want to be successful as a leader, do the leadership training for managers course. All companies need people who can both manage and lead. Leading people screams out for real skills in communication, dealing with all different types of people, being excellent at innovation, planning, delegation, handling mistakes, doing performance reviews really well, and inspiring and motivating the team. Do the Leadership Training for Managers course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. And then eventually you you were employed to run the operation here? Yeah. Is that how that, as a, president? A, as a president for Barclays Security. Okay, yeah. for Barclays Security. Yeah. And so um, when you're in that two and a half year period mm. where you're a suitcase banker, mm. you're, you're actually not really running a team so mm. much, I guess. You're the actual person who's doing the business. But then you come back, now you're running a mm. team in Japan. So you're back to running a team in Japan again, mm. which I guess is not so diverse in terms of nationality. Mm. Um, and what things did you bring from your experience in Europe or in London particularly uh, to running the team the second time around? Um, being in London for such a long time, total 16 years, mm. and uh, in Barclays, 10 years, let's mm -hmm. say, what I learned was uh, what a luxury to work in head office, mm. right? Your CEOs are like on the same floor, mm -hmm. your head of risk, mm -hmm. head of product, mm -hmm. your boss, mm -hmm. everybody's around you in a walking mm -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. You don't need to make a booking of mm -hmm. a meeting. You can just mm -hmm. walk in and grab them and mm -hmm. have a quick chat. Mm -hmm. Same thing, all the excellence mm -hmm. of uh, you know, people, product, mm -hmm organization or just in a walking distance. Mm. But in Tokyo, after all, it's a satellite office mm -hmm. in the Far East. Mm -hmm. So everything you do, you need approval, you need an email, you need to set the date for a meeting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a way, mm -hmm. right? It's not a home ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you stay here, you, you don't notice that. Mm. But because I moved in from London, mm. I immediately mm. felt that, oh, this oh. place is detached. <laughs> it's not well connected yeah. or it takes extra hours to get yeah. things done. Yeah. And uh, I kind of felt sorry for people here because they have to work long hour yeah. and uh, meetings are long, emails are long. Particular time zone difference mm. too is a, is a killer. Eight hours difference with London, so yeah. nine hours sometimes. But what about the yourself in terms of the way you led the team? Mm. Did you bring anything from that earlier experience to change the way you led the team the second time you're leading a team in Japan compared to the first? I think a Japanese organization tends to be very hierarchical. Mm -hmm. Pyramids are steep, mm -hmm. right? Top down and mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our reporting and consultation upwards, downwards, mm -hmm. mostly upwards. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make a very, very flat mm -hmm. team because mm -hmm. after all, this is a satellite office mm -hmm. branch. Mm -hmm. It's not a head office. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have a grandiose uh, mm -hmm. organization like head office. Mm -hmm. So make things flatter mm -hmm. so that day-to-day uh, -day junior working people, mm -hmm. I would say working people, they're producers. Mm -hmm. The real producers have a say to mm -hmm. the management mm -hmm. or management can have a skin in the game on the floor mm -hmm. instead of sitting in a, whatever a glass covered room. Mm -hmm. So uh, we spent a few years just making this happen. Mm -hmm. like, uh, whoever who were in our way in terms of uh, being a middle manager, mm -hmm. blocking, mm -hmm. transparency, they had to leave. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So now we have about 500 people here. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and the, I would say team is quite flat and transparent. Mm. And uh, people would have their voice heard. Mm. How long did it take you to get to that stage of being more um, flat, structure and more transparent? It, it, it took two, three years. Two, three years. But okay. uh, as a leader, if you actually stay very consistent around mm -hmm. your messaging, mm -hmm. some people might have heard too many times, but uh, if you stay consistent, no lies, mm. that's a you know virtue of authenticity, I guess, mm -hmm. then people understand, oh, who this guy is all about. Mm. And, and he uh, means it. Yeah, he means it. Yeah. He yeah. repeats that so many times, like a broken record. <laughs> yeah. And uh, flat structure and transparency is important mm. to make people see what else is happening. Yeah. You know, outside of your desk silo, yeah. let's say. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you talked before about uh, when you're in London, mm. the uh, traders are hitting the pub at five. <laughs> Um, they were. And uh, did you go with them? I mean, you know, thinking yeah. about engaging people because, you know, in Japanese culture, mm. well, probably changing today with young people, probably got a different view on this, but traditionally, you know, go out for meals together, go drinking together mm. as, a, as a way of bonding with the team as a leader. Mm. Um, what things have you found in the course of your career so far have worked very well for getting engagement mm. with the team? With a certain people, yes, I hit the pub. With a certain people, I went out for Sunday brunch with uh, their wives and kids. Oh, okay. So mm. I think the way to engage each individual were very different mm. and uh, or more diverse, let's mm -hmm. say. And some people care about big party. Mm -hmm. Some people care about very private conversation. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, that's another diverse you know, way of uh, dealing with people and uh, which I've learned. Mm. It's, it's case by case, right? And how do you know case by case? Because, you know, the, you've got to have knowledge of people mm. to realize this person's a Sunday brunch, mm. this person's, you know, five o'clock in the pub, yeah. this person's maybe a lunch together or dinner together. How did you work out who was who? How do you find that Try out? Trial and error. Trial and error. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, I have to involve my wife, let's say, and okay. sometimes my kids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just uh, how things worked out or didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes, you know, I will go on a venue that uh, which my family might not necessarily like, mm -hmm. let's say, but, but you know, family engagement is very important mm -hmm. in that country too, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was an interesting journey, let's mm -hmm. say. Okay. It's, not, it's not a straight, but winding. Okay, winding road. Yeah. So what other things did you find work well for getting the team engaged in what mm -hmm. they're doing? If it's outside office, like uh, anything physical, mm. that sort of uh, expose a lot of uh, different part of their character. Like paintball battles in the bush or something? I what have never about? done paintball, but uh, we, we, we traveled or uh, we played this and that. And uh, we also participated in a sort of a running event. Here in Tokyo, too, we do have a team of uh, runners. Mm. And uh, we participate in... Uh, Mountain climbing. Yeah, you're one of the runners too. Yeah, I, I you're looking, do. You've got that runner build. You got that very, uh, uh, very trim not, build. Not, not sure. Getting old. You can't beat the age. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's yeah. True. So we, we do have uh, these uh, outside office, mm -hmm. you know, engagement. And mm -hmm. uh, again, it's not for all. Let's mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. but uh, at least it sends a message that mm -hmm. uh, oh, this guy is willing to take extra mile mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm get engaged with people outside mm. office. Mm. Yeah. Even if you're not part of it, let's say, mm. at least it's a messaging, right one. Yeah. Did I, I may, I may be mm. having this incorrect, but did I see something on social media mm. around maybe the Pride uh, mm. event and mm. you had a team there from Barclays participate? I think we, we had. We had a private event, like yeah. an annual event, yeah. um, participating in a parade. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. I missed this year, but okay. uh, the previous one I was there too. Okay. It's quite a fun event to rediscover uh, your, your own people, let's yeah. say, and yeah. uh, with their family together. Yeah. And uh, different, very different side of uh, same people that you are spending time in office. Yeah. 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 
So this is, I guess, part of the bank's mm. commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion. So they're taking part in things like this. And you're, yeah. as a leader, you're there as well. Yeah. Showing and that we, well. we are also get involved in a lot of charity event, mm -hmm. what we call citizenship event mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. a whole. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only helping them financially, but mm -hmm. uh, we always ask for a volunteer to mm -hmm. uh, get engaged. Again, not necessarily on a weekend also, but uh, also sometimes weekday. Mm. And uh, this whole COVID restriction has mm. made uh, us very restrictive around uh, yeah. having a physical engagement. But mm. uh, I think it's coming back. Coming again. back. Mm. So this is part of your corporate social responsibility yeah. area, right? Yeah. What other things did you find works well getting engagement with people? I think having a very private conversation, mm -hmm. if they like, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. uh, in the room. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like a periodical, like a monthly. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. can be happening 10 minutes on ad hoc mm -hmm. and uh, listen to what they're going through or they're up to. Mm -hmm. Again, back to empathy issue mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. if they feel that uh, I understand their pain and uh, mm -hmm. issues they're going through, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of communication easier. Mm. So, and next time they can listen to my story. Mm. Yeah. One of the triggers to getting innovation and creativity mm. is that people care. Mm. You know, if they're not engaged, mm. well, they don't care to make it better, how to make it better. But if they're engaged, then their brain's thinking, okay, how can we improve what we're mm. doing as an organization internally, externally, with clients, with markets, or whatever. So what things have you found work well to get ideas from people, creativity from people, innovation from people? I think... At this firm, we always talk about accountability and ownership mm -hmm. because uh, if you are working at the very low end of your pyramid, mm -hmm. you end up just uh, doing whatever you were told to do. You're like a pitch book jockey, let's say, okay. what they call. But if I tell them that, that you own this, mm -hmm. you own this project and that you are accountable for the results mm -hmm. and I'm expecting that results to be coming out next week, mm -hmm. Either they get pressured under burden mm -hmm. or they rise to the occasion and be motivated, mm. eyes wide open, mm. and take ownership. Mm. And uh, it doesn't matter whether you are 40s or 30s or you're a grad, right? Mm. Once you own it and you run with it, mm. it's yours. Mm. And um, I think that's where I think innovation comes out. Mm. I believe that uh, a lot of interesting ideas are people are concerned about coming out of a fear of a conflict, let's say. Mm -hmm. But if they own it, there's no fear, to be honest, mm. because they need to come out with their own idea. They need to come out with their own execution. Mm -hmm. And they are fully accountable for results. Mm. And uh, I, I think we actually en encourage, mm. foster that environment here. Do you have any sort of formal uh, brainstorming methodology you mm. use? Because in a lot of cases, you've got 500 people here, mm. you've got you know, uh, some degree of diversity mm -mm -mm. through age and stage and status and background and education or whatever. So it's a rich, it's a rich environment mm. from which to get fresh ideas, new ideas, innovative ideas. So one of the problems is, okay, great resource. Mm. But how do you tap into that resource to get the ideas out? Have you come mm. up with any things here that work well to get the ideas out, things you've seen work well? That's a very interesting question, which I would like to ask too. But uh, I think you just should s just spend time mm -hmm. because uh, all the good ideas are embedded in you know, all the people's background. If you're mm -hmm. dealing with a 25-year-old youngster, mm -hmm. he has 25-year experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, to tap into whatever he has, inside him, you can't just get it out in a minute, right? Mm. You need to speak, talk, mm. and mm. Uh, communicate, mm -hmm. and uh, let them trust you. Mm. Unless there is trust, uh, they won't come out with, uh, mm. you know, whatever they, they are keeping inside. So, mm. uh, and again, idea won't magically turn into execution. Mm. So um, we really need to teach them, coach them, how to bring it to the finishing line. Mm. And um, I think uh, I've learned a lot of very, very interesting um, uh, uh, sort of strategic ideas from mm -hmm. uh, younger talent. Mm. Um, sometimes it's very wacky. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, financially it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. But it sort of gives me many idea around, oh, that's the kind of aspect that uh, I was missing. And mm -hmm. maybe I should put that as a one piece of puzzle mm -hmm. somewhere in my head. Mm -hmm. And when it comes, I should apply, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I, I think instead of just talking to the older contemporary people, mm -hmm. You, you end up learning a lot more from uh, so-called digital native youngsters, yes. right? They're so connected, yes. right? Like uh, our generation, we just miss connection so easily, mm. but somehow they are able to stay connected, right? Mm. Stay multi-connected, mm. mm. <laughs> admirable, mm. right? It's and quite different. Yeah, very different. Yeah. And you talked about trust a little mm. bit there before. Mm. Talk to that subject. How do you, what have you found works well in building trust with people as the leader? Um, probably if they're convinced that uh, I'm listening to them, mm -hmm. they start to show that, that trust. Mm -hmm. But the probably catalyst would be mm. if I understand what they're looking for in mm -hmm. terms of their career development or mm -hmm. in, terms of, in, in terms of their life objective, let's say, mm -hmm. fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And once I understand it, I will be possibly able to help, mm. right? And uh, if I get engaged in some of the support function for their career development mm. in a very, I don't know, case by case, mm. although sometimes something I, 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 I can never help, but uh, if they actually, feel that uh, I'm helping them. Mm. That's where I think uh, trust is built. Mm. But uh, so if they do have a career sort of advice, they're asking me, I will be very serious about mm. responding to mm. um, what I believe is the right thing to you know, be done. And mm. uh, I, I can teach from my experience, mm. but uh, I can also look into their own characteristics and say, for your behavior and character, I mm. think I recommend this and that. Mm. And uh, maybe sometimes I can help introducing mm. other people mm. or guiding them to the right direction. Mm. And uh, again, if they feel that the, they get a lot of help from me, mm. I would say that's when the trust starts, I guess. Yeah, and certainly one of the in our research, one of the triggers to getting engagement mm. is that the people feel their boss cares mm. about them. Mm. That's a really important mm. trigger, which you've referred to. But the point there is you've got 500 people. Mm. So you've got middle managers, people mm. in your reporting line. Are you also leading them to be doing the same thing because everyone's got their own style, I yeah. guess, of leadership. But what you're talking about now is driving that trust right down to the mm. very bottom through middle management. Is that something that you're doing, encouraging your middle managers to take that approach or how are you looking at it? I think you're right about it. Every leader has a different style of leadership and they have different emphasis. Mm. Some people are focused on numbers. Mm -hmm. Some people are focused on people management, mm -hmm. emotional or mm -hmm. uh, more IQ related mm -hmm. you know, management. One thing common that I want to prevail is make sure that uh, they look at the bright side of things. Mm -hmm. So if you're dealing with an individual, look at what he's good at, mm -hmm. how to make that good into great, mm -hmm. and uh, focus less on you know bad part, let's say, mm -hmm. because uh, changing bad into good mm -hmm. sometimes it's very very hot, tough mm -hmm. and especially when you're a mature ad adult mm -hmm. so um i would say let's encourage people to flourish or you know nurture their good side mm -hmm. and uh everybody 500 of us do have strong skill set mm -hmm. and also some of the fallback mm -hmm. drawback and uh to me I think the most efficient way, the most fulfilling and satisfying way of uh, having a corporate career is corporate company appreciate your good part. Mm. And um, yeah, so let's focus on that. Th that's one thing I, I would always t tell my, mm. let's say, next generation, next level leaders. Mm. 
so that they can really motivate their mm. staffs. Japan is a country of no defects, mm. no mistakes, no errors. Yet, if we want innovation, if we want creativity, it's a messy process. Yeah. There's bound to be mistakes, mm. experimentation. You talked about doing a lot of things through trial and error, mm. and there's the word error mm. <laughs> in that sentence, right? So how do you treat mistakes here? Or if you make you, as a leader, how do you, you treat them? If you make mistakes, you just tell people openly. Mm. But when they were their mistakes. Yeah, their, their mistake too. I mm -hmm. will teach them to tell them openly that what, how, what mistake you made and how you made it mm -hmm. and how you want to remediate it. Mm -hmm. And I will do the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's always one thing I tell my leaders that if you're going to do something, tell them what mm -hmm. you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And if you succeed in doing so, I told you so. Mm -hmm. Right? Instead of just uh, waiting for success to come mm -hmm. that's all hindsight mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you rather want to tell in advance mm -hmm. and if you fail you also need to tell mm. i had this plan it didn't work out mm. right i i think i was wrong mm -hmm. and being open as such will encourage your staff to do the same mm. yeah they will come out with a plan mm -hmm. they will come out with a timeline mm -hmm. and if it doesn't go well they need to review mm. and that's a repeat right mm. process mm. and uh, so you should not be shy of uh, what you want to do mm. you should not do it quietly mm. that's what I'm saying mm. yeah okay and what about culture because you know you have in any organization you talked before about you have the headquarter culture mm. then you have the branch culture you have the uh, foreign headquarter culture the Japan culture mm. then you have the culture that you create mm. as the leader mm. What are your thoughts on creating culture in organizations? What works? I've been in Barclays now 18 years. This is 18 years. Mm -hmm. So I believe I'm part of culture, mm -hmm. Barclays culture. And um, Barclays is a place that uh, you really need to be genuinely right human being mm -hmm. before being a banker, which is the kind of thing that I, I really like. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, in a good old days or 90s or noughties, early, pre Lehman time, yes, we might had a bad apple. Mm -hmm. That's always the case with the corporates, right? Mm -hmm. But we had a culture to make sure those bad apples been removed, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to make people aware, even in Tokyo, that uh, if we have a bad apple, mm -hmm. there is no place to stay here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a very consistent message. What defines a bad apple? What does a bad apple do that needs removing? Bad apple means he or she has a bad negative influence to others mm -hmm. in terms of keeping motivation right mm -hmm. to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you do the right thing every day, right, even if it's not necessarily profitable, mm -hmm. eventually you'll be profitable. Mm. And uh, when I say bad apple, they actually focus on whatever right for them, self-interest mm -hmm. or try to protect their own interest mm -hmm. or try to focus on a very short term money. Mm. And uh, they do have influence mm. Ar mm. around people around them. Right. Mm. And uh, I personally don't think that uh, that's the right way to run the team on mm. the floor mm. because it's contagious. Yeah. The other side of it is uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion around whether people should come back into office, right? Like uh, work, from home, hybrid working, yeah. or you should yeah. be entirely yeah. back in office. Mm. Um, the best logic I like is about you need to work close with a top athlete, mm. right? You know those uh, like uh, Olympic game, mm -hmm. 100 meter run. Mm -hmm. The fastest guy in the middle and somehow all the guys running next to him get mm -hmm. drawn into him mm. because they actually are in a very close vicinity. Mm. Same thing in the office. You actually sit very close to top athletes, motivated, driven people, having a top performance. You get really, really positively impacted. Mm. Other side is those bad apple. Same problem. Mm. Yeah, same problem. Mm. So I believe that the, the benefit of being in office is uh, you can stay close to top athletes. Mm. So has everyone come back into the office? Um, in our office, yeah, mostly. Mostly. Like mostly. mostly. Okay. I mm. would say, I would say, 
60, 70, 80 percent. Depends on the team, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, client engaging teams are 100 percent back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the, the way uh, to learn from every day's work mm-hmm. is, you know, you have to stay with, uh, you know, energized, motivated people. Mm. Yeah, I agree too. If you were going to give some advice to someone mm. who is being sent to Japan mm. to run an operation here, they don't know Japan, they don't mm. speak Japanese, what would be some advice you'd give them? Um, again, organization structure mm-hmm. is always about top-down and the layers and the middle mm. managers mm-hmm. and the reports, consultation. You should probably go down to the weeds first mm. Mm. and listen to people. So. Uh, I do agree that uh, you spend first 90 days listening to people mm-hmm. and uh, form your view, mm-hmm. but uh, your input period finish in 90 days. Right. Then you start to have an output. Mm-hmm. So uh, first 90 days, yeah, instead of just uh, getting an update from your top managers, mm. you should really hit the floor. Mm get to the detail mm. and uh, even micromanage, mm-hmm. micro listen. Micro listen. Yeah. Mm. And uh, understand what's in the weeds. Mm. Yeah. And uh, then these people will recognize you as a, uh, oh, he wants to know mm. what I'm doing. Mm. And um, I think that's very important. Mm. What else yeah. would you recommend? I also go and see clients with them. Mm-hmm and see the dynamics of uh, how clients are treating them or mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. or how they've been engaged with clients. Are mm-hmm. they in a subservient way of uh, coverage mm-hmm. or are they talking like a friend mm-hmm. or are they having a very strategic conversation mm-hmm. where clients wants to trust us as a, one of those inner circle mm-hmm. banker, let's mm-hmm. say. So I would definitely recommend to go see clients together. Mm-hmm. and see how the dynamics is working there, like chemistry, mm. right? And uh, mm. Which I've done a lot, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. Then I can have my own judgment that how we've been treated, mm. how clients are looking at us mm. as, a, as a bank, mm. yeah. Well, then when you do those visits with the uh, mm. team, mm. You're the president, right? So you get all the attention. Yeah. <laughs> they probably, you know, they're That's probably true. just there, and it's really about you. You know. That's true. So That's it's hard true. to judge how they're doing, isn't I it? I know. I need to have a follow-up call. Yeah. So uh, after a meeting, I probably will have another phone call, just to get a bit more detail or mm-hmm. how get a different angle and uh, mm-hmm. something that uh, I, I try to extract something that I couldn't get during the meeting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But again, it, it takes time. It takes time, yeah. It takes time. Yeah. What yeah. else? What other advice would you give them? I what else? What else? As Should I, they as learn I, Japanese? Sorry? Should they learn Japanese? Wow, that's always help. Mm-hmm. Always help. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm I mean uh, I didn't speak to learn French or German when I had people there, but uh, I'm sure um, they would have appreciated it. But the one thing I did was I went out to dinner and uh, drink with them yeah. to have a local food right? and uh, get to know all the local flavors. And uh, that sort of uh, makes, you know, distant closer, let's yeah. say. Yeah. 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 But uh, what else I have missed? I-, I had my cheat sheet here. Oh, please check yeah. the cheat sheet. <laughs> and... Uh, Ah, one, one thing I, 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 I sort of um, missed to talk about is uh, how you actually encourage people uh, to come out with more ideas. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, we celebrate success. Mm-hmm. Every small ones, large ones, mm-hmm. and uh, either it's an email or verbally or mm-hmm. on the floor, mm-hmm. announce it, and make sure that the people understand what we appreciate mm-hmm. from top performer, mm-hmm. dedicating uh, uh, sales, uh, 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 contributing bankers. Mm-hmm. And uh, we make sure that the people understand mm-hmm. what is a value or a devotion we cherish and aiming at. Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, letting them all work, work in silo, mm-hmm. let's say. Mm-hmm. 
they need to understand and look out that who else is doing great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, though, in Japan, mm. uh, unlike the West, you know, uh, if you start selecting people for mm. recognition mm. publicly, mm. a lot of Japanese are not comfortable with that. I know they I feel know. like, oh, oh, I'm going to be that nail that's going to stick out, and I'm going to get hammered down here. I'm going to get knives in the back, or people are going to be jealous and be talking about me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you, you said before, in terms of, yeah. do you go to the pub for dinner? Mm. Do you go to the German restaurant? Mm. Do you have the kids uh, brunch? You, you're sort of working out who's who. I guess it's the same type of thing of yeah. knowing. Oh, this person's quite comfortable to be recognized in yeah. front of everyone. This person, private lunch is better, or a quiet word, or just an email. I, I guess that's what you're doing. Extending the same idea. If if somebody is praised for a good performance, I rather want him or her to stand out, okay. step up, mm -hmm. and uh, be recognized as a next generation leader. Mm -hmm. Right? They need to live with it. Mm -hmm. Right? They can't just hide and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, qu keep your success quietly mm -hmm. and get paid. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. If you are top performer, mm -hmm. you need to be recognized and mm -hmm. you need to be a good example, like a mm -hmm. beacon mm -hmm. to other people mm -hmm. to follow. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people just don't need to simply follow the leaders. People mm -hmm. can follow the, your colleague, mm -hmm. as I said, like mm -hmm. a top athletes mm -hmm. sitting next to you. Mm -hmm. And these top athletes needs to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's not a favoritism, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, people need to understand we favor these mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. right? And uh, other people can, I won't say mimic, but mm -hmm. uh, look at them and goes, oh, I want to be one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. think there is anyone who doesn't want to be one of them, mm -hmm. right? If you're working for a competitive investment bank, mm -hmm. you rather want to be recognized for your performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And we, that's that's what we do mm. quite often. Mm. Yeah. Any other things on your cheat sheet there that um, you would like to bring up as a huh. good resource you've got there? Is there anything that I have missed? Um, uh, 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 uh. Oh, we are talking a lot about consistently excellent mm -hmm. in this firm. That's kind of a, a bit business jargon, mm -hmm. but... Uh, we use that phrase quite often. Mm -hmm. Consistently excellent means you just can't just uh, stay on a... Everybody has a different interpretation, but my mm -hmm. interpretation is uh, you will always improve <clears throat> what you have done. Mm -hmm. Something you had a great success, but you can even improve it and try this, better next time. Is this Kaizen you're talking about? Yeah. Or yeah. is this leaps of improvement because one of the things we talk about is japan is great on the kaizen front mm. you know but they're not so great on the leap mm -mm -mm -mm. front of taking it to another ah, level that's so which which one are you thinking there? i think it's more of a stewardship around keeping your place better and mm -hmm. when you leave platform should be better than when you mm -hmm. entered let's mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. and uh, you need to be accountable for your floor, mm -hmm. right? And uh, consistently excellent is a sort of attitude or mm -hmm. a mindset that, mm -hmm. uh, okay, if I'm gonna work today, I will leave tonight to make this place better. Mm -hmm. Even if I leave this place mm -hmm. and hand over to my juniors, mm -hmm. platform is better built. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think it's a very, very good concept to keep it in the back of your mind that uh, every time you do something, or am I doing an excellent job? Or am I doing even more excellent job than last time? Mm. So it's a bit a bit like Kaizen, but mm. it's not a big frog leap mm. yet. Mm. Yeah. That point about legacy uh. is an interesting one. Mm. Because, you know, that consistent excellence is there. And then you leave and your successor comes in. Mm. And sometimes your legacy is gone. Yeah. I agree. They screw it up, mm. or they take it a complete, or they they undo the things yeah, that yeah, you yeah. created, or they, you know, vary it, or they, you know, and you look back and you think, "Damn, I spent years <laughs> building that, and it's gone." You know. So how do you how do you think about that legacy aspect? I think that's a regime change which companies looking for, mm -hmm. and uh, that's probably the reason that uh, why you or somebody else is removed as a management. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, 
if we believe that uh, what we built is the right one, um, I can. I think you can do it again somewhere else, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be this company. But mm-hmm. I think this company is a place that uh, um, this uh, stewardship or this uh, mm-hmm. making your platform mm-hmm. even better mm-hmm. when you leave is pretty much ingrained in uh, mm-hmm. uh, senior management's mindset, mm-hmm. which which I like, mm-hmm. really like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your definition of leadership? Uh, it's it's more about one is consistency. Mm-hmm. So you repeat same mm-hmm. thing again mm-hmm. and again. Mm-hmm. No matter what that is, if it's about money making, mm-hmm. you need to repeat it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you need to be always always true to what you say. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, the other type of leadership is which sometimes I find it very hard is a. Uh, you need to execute the right thing mm. because executing right thing is very very hard mm. it's it might make a lot of people unhappy mm-hmm. and uh, i'm a kind of person that uh, i want to make majority happy mm-hmm. um but it doesn't necessarily mean i'm doing the right thing mm-hmm. hard thing mm-hmm. so i do have a, have a big admiration for people who in their isolated solitude doing the right thing mm. you know what i mean i'm mm. not that type mm-hmm. so uh doing the right thing is what I, what i actually look at look up as a one of the leadership you know trait that uh, i'm probably missing mm. it doesn't mean that uh, i'm not doing the right thing mm-hmm. but the, as i said doing the right thing is very very tough mm. yeah and people look at you mm. how you execute it mm. And uh, oh, that guy is um, very firm and mm. hardcore, mm. and uh, they actually do respect and admire for mm. his action. Mm. Yeah. But again, you have to be consistent. You have to be no lie, mm-hmm. authentic. Mm-hmm. It's it's very difficult, mm. right? It is. <laughs> yeah, very difficult. Yeah. Well, thank you, Keith. Sun. It's been thank fantastic. You. Great to have a chance to speak with you today, and. Uh, Look forward to uh, finding out how things move along for you in this journey we're all on. Yeah, 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 definitely. Well, well one thing I, I say is I, I turned 56. Okay. Yeah, so uh, almost 60, mm. right? But uh, I believe um, 50 is a new 30. Mm. So uh, Very good. in Japan, what we say is a healthy mind resides in healthy body. Yep. So that's always uh, my motto that mm-hmm. uh, I need to be... Uh, very healthy mm-hmm. uh, and uh, dynamic to keep my mind very sharp and mm. you know so uh that's what i would recommend to uh any leader coming mm. to japan right you can't yeah. just uh stick your head in the sand and uh work mm. work work mm. long hour because mm. a long hour and presenteeism is a uh, one thing that the japanese culture held for a long time yeah and, You're excellent uh, at that yeah it, it's, it's not working anymore mm. it's not mm. yeah good point yeah. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. And please join us again for our next episode of Japan's top business interviews.